Let me feel your tongue ring. Let me let me feel let me feel let me feel your tongue ring. Let me let me feel let me feel let me feel your tongue ring. Let me feel your tongue ring. Let me feel your tongue ring. Let me let me feel let me feel let me feel your tongue ring. Let me let me. Hey guys, it's Amy here from the Amy Andrews Productions, and today I'm doing another piercing related video. This one is on weird or really unheard of piercings. Weird is not necessarily a bad word. It's kind of another word for unique. So these are very unique piercings that you might have never heard of before. I certainly know that some of them that I've found out um, I've never heard of before and I was kind of like, whoa. Okay. I've made a list in my piercing book, as you guys have seen before. Been using this guy a lot more recently. So let's start off first with the uvula piercing. Now, if a lot of you don't know what the uvula piercing is, it is the, basically that dangly thing at the back of your throat. That is what a uvula is. A main thing that kind of controls your gag reflexes, and that's like vomiting and stuff, and your stomach peristalsis on your esophagus. It's that, that dangly thing at the back of your throat. Basically, this is what the piercing looks like. Uh, it's a very rare piercing. You will find very few people with this. And if you've got a friend who's got a uvula piercing, Wow, you've got an awesome friend because that takes some balls to get. I mean, you even try and shove your finger down your throat and it will hurt. If you try and touch that thing, you'll feel like you want to vomit. So God knows how someone's going to pierce it. Now, if you are thinking of getting a uvula piercing because maybe you like the uniqueness of it or whatever, then I'd say go ahead, get the piercing. Everybody has different piercings, but you must... You'll have to find, probably it will take a long time, to find a piercer willing to pierce you for a uvula piercing. It will be quite pricey as it's very rare and you need a professional. You can't just go to a local piercer. You're going to need to do research online, possibly fly to London or America or something to get this piercing because very few training piercers or piercers that have even been in the industry for like 11 years or loads of years may not even know how to do this because it's that rare. Next piercing I'll be talking about is called the deep oral or the mandible or the sprung, whatever you wish to call it. This piercing is completely unique. It's com very, 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 very rare. Um, the reason it's called deep oral is simply because, I know it sounds kind of dirty that name, the deep oral piercing. No, it's actually a piercing. Now guys, hold on to your seats because it's kind of gross but yet it depends on who you are and what you like. It's an oral piercing and an outside piercing. So basically, it goes from the bottom of your mouth, um, where you're, the bit underneath your tongue, it goes from there, all the way down, out through here. I know, right? It looks like this. So, as you can see, basically, it's like the size of an industrial bar. So here's your average, uh, this is actually one of the longer industrial bars you can get. And um, it's basically that all the way through like that. I was reading about it in my book because I was just so curious. I was like, how does anybody fucking have a needle shoved through the bottom of their mouth all the way out underneath their chin? I mean, that, if you, if you can get that piercing, it's like having a bullet shot through you. Seriously, I was like, oh my goodness. I mean, you can't clamp the area because your teeth is there and it's a way too big place to clamp. And you just have to shove a needle through, and the needle's got to be like that long if it's got to be longer than the th and longer than your whole area from there. I mean, that is really big piercing. You're piercing through your friggin' saliva glands. Also, this is also a very hard piercing um, to find a piercer willing to do it because it is just so rare as well. So, if you're thinking of getting rare piercings, the uvula and the deep oral might be for you. The next piercing we're talking about is the anti eyebrow. Now, you'll find with most piercings, such as the tragus or your helix, you can get anti-tragus, anti-helix, anti-tongue, anti-everything. Um, I don't know why they call them anti, because they're just in the opposite place to them. But yeah, this is the anti-eyebrow. And basically, instead of having it on your eyebrow, so it wouldn't be an eyebrow piercing, you have it down here. Here's a photo of it. Now, I have never seen people with this. If people want to get a piercing on their face like this, they would usually have two microdermals nowadays because surface piercings are just such a pain. And I know that microdermals are surface piercings, but having a bar underneath your skin is pushing it up. When you have, If you have two microdermals that are sitting underneath by themselves, it's, it's much less. It's like getting industrial piercing with two studs rather than one long bar. So this is what people tend to do nowadays. This piercing isn't around much because you can get one that looks exactly the same 
and it's got a better healing process and it's much more reliable to keep. The fourth weird piercing is an eyelid piercing. Now I've seen pictures on Google that I thought were spoofs. I thought they were like this weird spoof that's been cut out but it's actually true. You can get your eyelid pierced and this is a picture. So it's kind of weird. You think how would I blink? How would I see? Because if you try and touch your eye it like really hurts if you try and touch your eye, you're just kind of like, whoa, okay, I'm going to hold it there for like two minutes, but imagine blinking, you can't have a stud, you have to have a ring, you have a ring around your eye, so once again, not a very common piercing, you probably have people look at you a lot more than once if you have this piercing, and yeah, so it's kind of a weird one, but this is obviously, it looks quite uncomfortable as well, but you never know. These piercings now I'm going on with are going to be less toned down than the ones you've heard, but they're still quite rare and quite new to the piercing world. Okay, so we all know, I personally thought that the bridge piercing, which is the piercing across here of your bridge, kind of the nose piercing, is, I thought it was quite, quite weird. I, I thought it was very unique. I've never seen anybody with it. But nowadays you see loads and loads of girls and guys with it. Like, I've seen it out in the mall a couple of times. I've seen it online on, because I'm on the piercing group on Tumblr, so I see um, all the piercing photos and I see a lot of girls and guys have this piercing so the bridge is kind of getting more common but the vertical bridge I have not seen anybody with so vertical if this is horizontal it's vertical like this so it looks like you have two spots going down there once again this piercing is kind of going out and is probably never going to really come in because we have microdermals or surface anchors whatever you want to call them that are much more reliable than having a bar underneath your skin the healing process is better than having a surface piercing on your face. So people tend to go for that. The next piercing is called the Madison. Now, I'm not too sure how common this is because it's a torso piercing, meaning anywhere from underneath your neck all the way down to your hips. That's your torso. This piercing is actually located underneath your chin, here underneath your throat, sorry. So here is a photo, as you can see. Um, yeah. It's in a very awkward place, it's not dermals, it is a bar. Um, since it's so near your, your throat and if, you have, if you're a guy you have an Adam's apple, it would constantly move, um, but if you're a girl I believe the surface piercings are much more safe for things compared to dermals from what I've seen, but don't, if you're thinking of getting this piercing do much more research because it is quite unique piercing and obviously think, feel the skin here, it's quite sensitive and quite different compared to one a bit lower or on the shoulders. This is a very thin and delicate piece of skin, so I'm quite sensitive as well. So make sure if you're thinking of getting a unique piercing such as this one, make sure you do your research. Okay, next piercing I think is really cool and obviously if I could get it, I would have it. But I can't because it's the industrial belly button piercing. Not the industrial ear piercing. It's the same concept as the industrial ear piercing, but it's on your belly button. So you have the top belly button pierced and you have your anti-belly button pierced. And then you shove, like, uh, you put, I was about to say shove. <laughs> then you put a bar through it that's one bar that connects both of them. Now, this is a picture I found, and I think it looks awesome. Like, you can get recreational bars as you can get for your industrial piercing on your ear. But you can also have the industrial on your belly, and if I, had, if I could have this piercing, I would certainly have this piercing. And if you're new to me, and you don't know me, make sure you subscribe to my channel. But basically, the problem is is that I had my belly button pierced and it, reject, uh, it rejected and I don't want to get the bottom one until my top one I get it and it heals and that's after a year so I have to wait but I'd love to have this piercing if I could have it it looks gorgeous and I think if you have a top belly button piercing and a belly button piercing already try and find one of these lovely industrial bars you can put through it because I think it would be totally unique if you want to try and make your piercing more unique okay the next piercings I'm talking about are located on the hands now this first piercing is called the prayer piercing. The reason it's called that is because when you join your hands together, so like this, the piercings meet. The piercings are located on this side, the, the sides of your hands here, as you can see in the photograph. Um, this is it's quite a nice piercing if you're religious. I think this is quite a nice piercing. I would never get any piercings on my hand personally. But if you're religious and you feel like if piercings are such a problem in your religion or whatever, since this has a connection with the prayer, I think it'd be a really lovely piercing to get. Um, and obviously I haven't seen many people with that. Hand piercings wise, I've seen a lot of dermals um, on the upper hand and the fingers and piercings across the fingers. I've seen that a lot, but the prayer is quite, the prayer is quite rare. 
So I think if you're a quite religious person or even just like the look of this piercing and want to be unique, you should totally get it. The next piercing is the knuckle piercing. Now I think that this piercing would definitely suit somebody who is quite tough or um, wants to get the image that they're quite tough because I personally think it's quite a hard piercing. It looks rough, it looks like you can take anything. And this is a picture of it. So as you can see, it, it's kind of like, it's not actually pierced on your knuckle because it's your bone, you can't do that. But it's pierced in between it, which make if you have it all the way up your hand, that would look, it would look like a knuckle duster. I'm pretty sure it would feel like it as well. But, you know, that's quite a different piercing, and if you're somebody who's hard and wants to get some piercings like that, and you want to show the world that you're strong and you can get these hand piercings, then this might be the piercing for you. Now, the last piercing is very common, actually, but I wanted to add it in here because people don't really talk about it, and it's sometimes considered as a piercing, and it's sometimes not, and that's a nail piercing. So the nail piercing is basically... It's painless. If you're looking for a painless piercing, get the nail piercing because you have no nerves in your um, upper nails. Usually people and most nail salons will do this. If they don't do it, you can do it yourself at home. This is the only piercing I say you can do at home. Don't do any of the piercings at home, guys, okay? Um, but this is the only piercing I say is fine to do at home. And if you want a really unique piercing or if you want to get a piercing and you don't want painful or it's easy to take out or whatever, this is certainly the piercing for you guys, and it's a nail piercing, and basically people have it when they have fake nails put on, or if you're just somebody who's really lucky and has long nails, not, not, not like me, um, who actually has like white tips like coming off of their nails, then you can have this piercing as well, and it's completely painless. This is a sample I've got here. This one I've pierced it twice, um, as you can see, but I just did it with a paper clip. Paper clip? Um, needle up. Uh, safety pin and I got my hoops from Claire's and I think that if you painted your nail a colour or even if you just had it white and you had this on your finger it would look awesome I mean it's so unique and it just looks amazing because you don't feel anything so that would be a really good one to get so I hope you guys enjoyed this video I know it's something a little bit different I know that I want to just get something clear right now there's no such thing as a weird piercing there is such thing as unique piercings, but not weird, because everyone has their own judgement and we are no we are no place to judge. So if you have thought about having any of these piercings you've seen in this video, make sure you do your research because you go you can't go to a local piercing place and they'll know all about it because even if they say they do, they really don't. Because they are quite unheard of and very rarely got, especially the deep oral and the uvula. Comment below if there's any of the piercings you think is quite weird, or if you're thinking of getting these piercings, or any other videos you want me to do in the future. I know I've got like a whole list still waiting of my piercing profile, but I've been kind of taking a break from that. Um, and I'm going to wait till I finish school because I have an exam soon, so I'm not going to do any more research apart from what I need to do on my sociology and my science and all that. But any other videos you want me to do about like, weird piercings or about something else or something else. I know you guys are waiting for a video. Um, I'm pretty sure you know what I'm talking about, my subscribers, I know you guys are waiting for a, a video, but as I said, I cannot upload a video, that video, until after my exams, um, because of school purposes and things like that, I cannot upload it. Um, the day I finish my exam, I will upload it, I promise you guys, I'll upload every single vlog, I've been taking a vlog every single day for you guys to show you the process and stuff. Anyway, <laughs> enough from me now. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry if it's really long, but you know, I like to say a lot. I always say a lot. So you're watching the Amy Andrews Productions, and I will see you guys very, very soon.